Welcome more gamers, my name is Doug with 2 Plus Tough, and one of the things that I loved about Age of Sigmar when it first launched was the maps. If you don't know what I'm talking about, basically a lot of the, the maps that we got when AOS first launched, they weren't about the realms in this big abstract way like we know them now. They were just of very specific places and or continents, and they always had this very interesting feel to them, as if they really represented the realms in a meaningful way. I'll throw this example up here. This is one from Shaiish, where it's like a big temple of death kind of a thing. I absolutely love this kind of map style because it's it, it to me matches the heroic out there fantasy that Age of Sigmar is all about. However, recently Games Workshop has kind of been moving away from that into less detailed, less colorful things, but also bigger and more, I guess, detailed narratively, but not detailed visually, you know what I mean? And so uh, what I was recently introduced to by my buddy Ben over in Virginia was this awesome tool called Incarnate. And it is a, a map creator tool specifically for fantasy worlds where you can do just that. And so what I'm gonna do in this video is I wanna show you what I created for my Nurgle forces and, and the lore behind it and that kind of stuff to kind of give you inspiration as to how you can do the same thing. Incarnate is very cool because they have a whole host of tutorials on a YouTube channel, which there are links to. It is a completely free tool, although they do have a pro like paid option. And honestly, it's like 25 bucks for like a year or something like that. It's the best deal on the internet. If you are someone who runs RPGs and does this kind of thing, or you like to make narratives and that kind of stuff, it's perfect for that. So we're gonna talk about the, the world that I created for my Nurgle forces, and then I wanna give just a very, very light tutorial so that you can try and check this stuff out too. So here we are at the seven paradises of Nurgle. I have seven islands, and of course, if you can tell, I've configured them in a way that matches the classic Nurgle symbol, where you kind of have the peace sign going in the center and then the three, you know, pustules or whatever on the sides and one of them I cut in half. Boom, seven pieces. Um, how does this relate to my particular army's narrative? Well, I needed them to be islands because my character is called the Ferryman. He is a nautical based Nurgle army where they transport and explore uh, troops across Gyran. They explore um, different parts of the realm of life and they also ferry troops from one battlefield to the next. I'm gonna go kind of in a clockwise motion. Again, this is just to give you some inspiration for, for how you can do stuff. Uh, in the dead center, we have, I'm going to zoom in there, um, we have a gate that has been corrupted to go straight to Nurgle's realm like we saw in the Realm Gate Wars. And there's not a lot going on in the island because the land is so corrupted, it just really can't facilitate um, lasting structures and things like that. So we have a few crumbled buildings, some weird flora. Uh, that's very vibrant towards the south, but gets very morose and, and dour towards the north, as you can see these big old willow trees um, with some more shredded, torn up buildings up there. And so that's how I wanted to basically center the portal to Nurgle is in the dead center of the symbol for Nurgle. Now going to the right, we have uh, the twin islands of gloom and despair. And on Despair, there's of course uh, volcanoes and some cool crystals and a giant pit because of course you have to be able to fall into the pit of despair. And then on Gloom, um, it's the idea, I wanted to bring a part um, of Nurgle's lore where it's a lot of focus on hopelessness. And so Gloom is a giant graveyard. You can see there's shipwrecks and different kinds of ruined tombs because I wanted to create that idea of like, it's all for naught, right? It's all hopeless, you know, just give up kind of a thing. It's a very Nurgle-y approach or worldview, I should say. Now, as we go down to the bottom right, this is the like the right leg of that kind of peace sign looking thing. Uh, this is uh, the, the Sylvaneth prison, as they call it, where it's just a whole bunch of dead woods and a small city where basically they sit and they torture Sylvaneth endlessly. It is ultimately where Nurgle wants to put Hilariel, um, just to torture her forever. Uh, to the bottom center, we have what I was most excited to make, which is uh, my island dedicated to Puscoil Blightlords. Now, if you don't know, for me specifically with my Nurgle army, I love the Puscoil Blightlords. So I wanted something that really leaned into them specifically. 
And so what I created was this is an island that is dominated by mountains. And so you can live there and not be a blight lord, but all the resources are up high. And so you have to, you know, go through the ritual to become a Pascual blight lord to get your mount to be able to fly up to the top and live peacefully. There's an abundance of stuff up top, but you have to be, you know, strong and have the grit to be able to make it there. To the left here, we have a whirlpool, which, uh, you know, Deepkin can certainly pop out of. And then we also have what I call uh, the library, which is all of the plague bearers in their lore are walking around collecting information about plagues, recording them. That's why you see the Spoilpox Scrivener kind of like keeping tally of all these things. Well, this is the library where all that information is held. So it's kind of a repository of information. And then to the top left, what looks like a perfect paradise. You got some nice farmland, nice green. It stands out as being too nice. Uh, the reason for this is this is called Bounty, is the name of the island, where they produce um, crops and food that looks super healthy and great, but it's all contaminated by Nurgle. And so the ferryman takes this stuff all across the realm and shares it with people uh, to kind of spread these resources and slowly get people to infect themselves and each other. So this, to give you a sense, is what you can do with some of these island creators. Now, if you're somebody who, you know, um, does campaign RPGs and that kind of stuff, your mind is probably already full of ideas. For me, I did a very simple thing. I took the symbol of my faction, the Nurgle symbol, and then I divvied it up by a specific number. In, in Nurgle's case, it's seven, but you know most of the other gods don't care, right? Korn has a number, Slanesh and Zinch, but nobody else cares. But then what I did was created a, a theme for each section of my map that really reflects a different part of Nurgle. I mean, just Nurgle in general. You have the gate to Nurgle, you have the gross, nasty swamplands that we know in the books, the, the parts that are talking about gloom and despair, um, their relationship to Garan and kind of highlighted by the Sylvaneth prison. And then you get into the unit things where it's like, you know, all of the plague bearers and the scriveners are collecting information. This is where it's stored. Um, have a place that is reflective of a specific unit like I have with my Puscoil of Light Lords. And so this is just kind of, again, a, a kind of a nudge to be like, hey, you can do cool stuff. So uh, what I want to do now, after showing you my island and kind of walking through the different sections of it, I want to do a very, very light tutorial because this is the most accessible tool imaginable. And I want you to be able to play around with it as well. So on the main screen, once you have an account, again, there's a free account and then uh, a pro one, doesn't really matter which one you do. You can create a new map and you get our agree with a few options. These are all just for basically determining how um, large you want your map to be. Everything from a top-down kind of view, like you were playing an RPG, uh, which you can include a grid on, so you can actually map where your character is, all the way to like old world style maps like this, uh, which you can see. But we're gonna go with the one that I just worked on here. And you can choose the size of your file type. And you're introduced to a big ocean. Now, cool thing about this is uh, I chose to have mine be a chain of islands because frankly, my guy's lore is that he is island based. But if you go over to the right, or he, you know, he's nautical, so he needs an island. If you go over to the right here, you can actually uh, change how much of the ocean there is. So you can go to one ocean and generate new world. Let me try this. There we go. <laughs> Took it a second. But yeah, and so here we are. Now it's an entirely land thing. You can do as much or as little water as you want. And in, it will auto-generate a world based on this. Now, of course, if you go, you know, all the way to water, you can get rid of this. You can start over. Do whatever you want. But let's, let's stick with this for now. On the left here, you have what's called a mask tool. And this is really, really interesting. All these things, if you hover over them, have great instructions to kind of give you a sense of what you're doing. Um, the background is ocean by default. The foreground is land. So we're gonna draw some land here with our masking tool. And what's cool is the second I let go of this mouse, it's going to create ocean shores. 
Boom, look at that, isn't that sweet? And so now that we have this cool snake island, let's say it's a Daughters of Cain, you know, they got snake themes going on for days kind of thing. Let's uh, start playing around with building it up. Now, this is not that awesome, right? Creating a, just a, a landmass over water, not super impressive. That's why we go to the brush tool. The brush tool can be painted on the foreground, meaning the actual dirt, or the background, meaning the water. You go over to the right and you choose your texture, of which there are tons. There are tons of textures in this system, guys. And let's say we wanted the left side to be this nice, verdant thing. You can be as loosey-goosey with the controls as you want because it doesn't really matter. It's not painting on the water at all. It's going to just straight up cap at the landmass. But let's say we wanted to have it also one side's the dark side. So we'll come over here, we'll paint this all up. Boom. Now, this looks cool, but it doesn't look the best. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn down the opacity of the dark part and kind of just smooth it in so that these two places kind of blend into each other. You see that? Because, you know, in the real world, we don't go straight from desert to, you know, icy tundras, we have a kind of an in-between zone. And so that's what we just did there. We kind of smoothed out that transition. There's a whole bunch of tools in here. Like I said, I'm just giving you a very, very light taste. Um, next thing I want to talk about is this little castle thing here. It's called a stamp tool. If we go over to our right and look at our catalog here, there are a ton of stamps. And this is how you add the actual elements to your world. So let's grab some, some dark mountains and we'll put a big old mountain right there at the end. You can of course change the size with this slider right here. And um, the only thing with the slider I would suggest is just really try to get a good sense of like how you want things to look in terms of like the scale, you know, how far away you're zooming out kind of a thing. One that thing that it, it struck me as super unique about this tool, let's say we wanted to make some trees. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna plant Oh, uh, let's do these trees, the bamboo ones. Now you'll notice it says show 10. What does that mean? Well, there are actually 10 different um, icons for bamboo trees that they have here. And now you're thinking to yourself, that's really annoying to have to kind of flip between all of them. Don't worry about it, bud, because if you go up here to where it says radius, you're gonna crank that up just a smidge. And you can see there's a whole bunch of trees there. What it's doing is it's creating a radius and then taking random um, versions of the same tree and plopping them in the same place. The reason that's cool is because it makes it look more diverse and more interesting than it would if you were just click, 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 click. You know what I mean, made a straight line. You can actually take this and drag it and boom, you've got a cool looking forest. I don't recommend doing that, that's a lot of bamboo. <laughs> you can do that with mountain ranges and anything like that. If you go up here to the pointer tool, you can drag and drop and select as many as you want, click backspace and they're all gone. So that's all easy as it gets. Um, one other cool thing is the path tool, which you can set up the, let's crank the thickness so it shows up really, really well here. But basically, if you wanted to map the travels of a realm, you can literally drag and drop. And this is the path that your characters have to walk. Boom. I like that. I think it's a really cool thing. Um, beyond that, you can add uh, text. So we can, like, you know, put Mount Doom right here. And that could be where, you know, Marathi's chilling or whatever. We'll grab our tool here and get rid of these. But all I'm saying is there's a ton of really cool things, especially with the stamp selection. Everything from um, bridges, buildings, structures, shipwrecks, construction, modern day stuff. There's dwarven, elven, orc, chaos, different kind of aesthetics, loose aesthetics. And then you have stuff like banners. So we can put a banner behind Mount Doom and uh, even bring it forward. There we go, so now it's covering up the top of the mountain, which obviously you wouldn't want to do, but it totally works. So friends, that is Incarnate. That is the tool I wanted to show everybody and how I made my Nurgle Islands. And frankly, I'm gonna be playing around with this thing like a lot, like a lot, a lot, because it's really fun to just kind of world build, especially when, you know, the realms can be so abstract that you want to put your own flavor in 
Games Workshop gave us this huge sandbox and then some really out there landscapes in the beginning and now they kind of eased off of that, but I'm like, no, I want this. This is what I want so bad. So I'm gonna keep creating uh, different kinds of worlds and stuff like that and posting them online. And I'd love for you to do the same. If you do, go ahead and tag me in them over on Instagram, specifically I use Instagram the most of all social medias and uh, I'd love to see what you guys have. Thank you all so much for watching. Happy Wargaming.